Now we're not limited to just prisms on our planet. We also have different types. For example, we have pyramids and spheres. Now, of course, we also have irregular objects, but as part of the Foundation's 10 curriculum, we're going to stick with what we have. So the standard formula of the basic shapes that we have of rectangular, triangular, and circle are always going to be used. Now, obviously, the surface area of a pyramid would just be taking the surface area of each side. So whatever sides they are, whether they're squares or triangles or rectangles, well, that's what we're going to have to deal with. Now, the surface area of a cone, well, a cone is essentially a circular-based pyramid. We have the area of a circle plus the entire outside. This entire thing will be the lateral surface area of a cone. The S part of it stands for the slant height. Surface area of a sphere is 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by the r squared, or radius squared. The main reason for this is it's, uh, it's, there's an, a good explanation. It's kind of hard to draw, but if you have a cylinder, that has a actual sphere in it. We have a radius. And if the height of this is two times the radius, so we actually have a sphere. Overall, when you have everything completely overlapped, it comes down to this formula. The reason for it is because the surf, just the lateral surface area of the of the cone or not cone, of the cylinder is two pi r h, but if the height of this cylinder, that cylinder, if it gets everything just gets completely overlapped and folded in, this h value height is two r, and two times two is four. We have the pi, and r times r is r squared. So that's kind of the basic idea and reasoning behind that formula. But the volumes of pyramids, cones, and spheres have a specific outcome. Because it doesn't matter what kind of pyramid you have, it will always be one third of the size of its related prism. So if you have any kind of box, and if you had a pyramid, so something that comes to a point, this will always, this blue interior would always be one third of the size of the prism. And that's the same for pyramids as well as is the same for cones, because a cone is just the pyramid or a cylinder. The volume of a sphere, though, is also really kind of fascinating to deal with and, under and understand. And the entire idea behind it is still this area of the base multiplied by the height divided by three. Well, if you infinitely split a sphere into square-based or any kind of thing, and you draw pyramids all the way to the center, the height of that pyramid would be the radius. But every single pyramid takes the area of the base, multiply by the height, and divide by three. Well, the entire base of this sphere is four, four multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared, divided by three. By combining the like bases, we get to an r cubed instead of just this r squared, because r squared times r is r cubed. So this is some kind of fun background behind the formulas. Now let's actually get into using them. 
what we're going to do is we're going to determine the height and the slant height of the square base pyramid given the lateral surface area. One too many periods, but we'll fix that up. So this is our lateral surface area. Well, we have a square base pyramid. If we have a square base pyramid, it means that this triangular side is the exact same as all the way around. Well, so the area is going to be 4 multiplied by the area of a triangle. So base times height divided by 2. Now this height part, though, is only the height of each triangle. So we're going to have to do some manipulation. We have the area of this lateral surface area, or this pyramid, being 3,000. So we can plug that in. At the same time, we can do some manipulation here, for example. 4 and 2 would reduce to just being a 2. So we can leave that. The base of the triangle says it's 50. multiply by the height. So in order to manipulate to get the height by itself, we would divide by the 2 times 50, or being 100. Leaving us with the height of the triangle, the slanted triangle, being 30. Or 30, what's our unit? Inches. The biggest thing, though, is that is not our height. That is the height of the triangle, which is actually the slant height. So the slant height is actually 30 inches. So we have this slant height. We also have a right angle triangle. So we have each of these triangles. Let me make that a little bit nicer. So this right angle triangle, so looking at this, this slant is 30, 30 inches. The entire base here is 50. What we need to do is we need to find out what is the legitimate height here. Now, of course, take a few things for granted. For example, this would obviously split evenly into two spots. So 25 and 25, meaning we can use our Pythagorean theorem. So our c squared would be the 30. Doesn't matter with whether it's a or b. So I will leave a as our unknown. Our b value will be the 25. And then we can do some manipulation. 25 squared should be 625. 30 squared would be 900. Subtract our 625. That should be 275, right? Yeah. And take the square root. So the height of this pyramid will be 16.58 inches. So the height, 16.58 inches. So there's just a little bit of introduction to that part. Now let's deal with actually finding out surface areas and volumes. So let's see, we have a cone. Surface area of a cone. is pi multiplied by the radius squared, which is the area of the circle, so that entire base, plus pi multiplied by the radius multiplied by s, which is the slant height. We can plug in what we know. The radius says is 4. 
but unfortunately, right now we don't know what our S is. So we're going to have to calculate what it is. Meaning, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. The good news is we have the two legs, so calculating it should be nice and quick. S is our hypotenuse, so we'll go in the place of the C. 100 plus 16. So our square root of 116 is 10.7703. So whenever we have something calculated, I recommend using four decimal places, especially since we're not actually finished with our work. Now I'm going to use that. That's already my calculator. I have the entire value in my calculator, so I'm going to actually use it right away. Multiplied by 4, multiplied by the pi. And I get 135.3440. Pi multiplied by 4 squared will be 50.2655. Add them together. Oh, I lost my stuff on my calculator. So one thirty. Add the one thirty five point three four four zero, and we get one hundred eighty five. Final answer. Round to two decimal places. One hundred eighty five point six one meters squared. Our volume is a little bit easier to work with is just pi r squared times the h, which is the area, or sorry, that is the volume of the sphere, not, ah, sorry, cylinder. Wow. So if we had built up this entire circular base to have a circular base at the top, we have a cylinder. But because it comes to, the cone comes to a point, we divide by three, meaning three cones would fit into a cylinder. We have everything that we need because our radius is 4 and the height of the cone is 10. So pi multiplied by 16 multiplied by, sorry, I just did 4 squared. We get 167.55 meters cubed. And that will be our volume. So obviously, if our surface area wasn't asking for the circular base, we would just have to worry about this pi or s. Entire volume is pretty nice and basic. If we want to find out the surface area of a pyramid, well, we're going to have to find out the area of each of our sides. Our base here is a rectangle. So the rectangle is length times width. This front side here is a, is a triangle, so base times height divided by 2. But the good news is the back side here would be the exact same because it would also have a base of 4. So we're going to multiply that by 2. Even the left and right are also triangles, and we're going to have to do that too. So that's going to be base times height divided by 2 times 2. So this one is going to be the front back triangles, and this will be the left right triangles. Fill in what we know. The base is a 4 by 6 rectangle. Unfortunately, though, we do not know what the heights of each of these triangles are. So the triangular faces, we don't know what they are. We only know that the height of the entire pyramid is 8 meters. So we're going to have to do two triangles here. This one is going to help calculate for the front back. And I'll do this triangle over here, which is going to help, calcul help calculate for the left-right triangles. 
all the information we have, the height of each of these is 8. But these bottom sides are a little bit different. In this, for the front back triangle, this side is what we're working with. It is not 4. It is not even half of 4. This entire length of the pyramid is 6, meaning this is 3. Likewise, in this triangle, that side is not the 6, it's the 4. Well, more specifically, half of the 4. So 2. Now we can use these values and find out what our hypotenuses are of each of these faces. So 3 squared is 8 squared. We'll call, let's see, we'll call this one, and we'll just call it C. And this one, we'll call D. So 9 at 64. So that comes out as 73. Square root of it. C would then come to 8.5440. For this triangle, we have 2 squared at 8 squared equaling the d squared. So 4 at 64. So this, we would be finding the square root of 68. So 8.2462. Now the biggest thing is we need to find out where are we going to be putting these numbers. So for the front back triangles, our base of the triangle is 4. The height here is this C value, so it's the 8.5440. Even though we were using the 3 in the, right, in the Pythagorean theorem, this is a side that is related to this base 4. It's not, it is not the four side, it is just the, side, the slant that is directly attached to that four. At the same time, I know that multiplying by two and dividing by two would cancel things off. So as long as you've shown this, I'm happy. But if you just write base times height, well then you're just doing a rectangle and I, I can't tell that you actually know how to work with a formula. I expect that you show your work. Uh, next step. So for the left right tri triangles, it would be a 6 times whatever D is, which is 8.2462. Multiply things out. Sorry, I have this one still in my calculator, so I'm just going to write down this one. I did the entire value still in my calculator, so I'm going to use it. Of course, I would love for you to be able to use 34. Use your calculator as much to your advantage as possible. Add them all together. Get 107.65 meters squared. Find out the volume. It's really easy. It doesn't matter what type of pyramid we have. It's the area base times the height divided by 3. So for this one, carry the base, multiply by the height, divide by 3. 
the area of the base? Well, the area is a rectangle. It's a four by six rectangle, more specifically. The height of the pyramid is eight. Divided by three. If I'm doing my math in my head correctly, it should come out as 64. Let's double check. Perfect. So our volume is 64 meters cubed. How about this one? It says our volume is 300 meters cubed. We need to find out the radius. Well, the volume of a cone is pi r squared h divided by 3. So if the volume is 300, our radius is our unknown. But we do know that our height here is 8. Divided by 3. To manipulate this equation, sorry, first I would multiply by 3. That allows me to cancel off the 3 and 3. Radius squared times h, sorry, 8. Then I can divide by both pi and 8 to get the radius by itself. When I plug this into my calculator, of course, I'm going to put brackets around there. So I am dividing by both the pi and the 8. That would leave me with the radius squared equal to 35.8099 and take the square root. And that square root comes out as 5.98, our unit would be meters. All right, our last one, fun one, determining surface area and volume of a sphere and a hemisphere. So for the surface area of a sphere, it just takes four, multiplies by pi, and multiplies by the radius squared. While our diameter is 12, which puts our radius at six. That one's really nice to do. 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by 6 squared is 452.39 centimeters squared. The volume, our formula is 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius cubed divided by 3. So our radius again is 6. When we plug all of that into our calculator, make sure to type it in correctly, I get 904.78 centimeters cubed. For a surface, surface area of a hemisphere, so a hemisphere is just half a sphere, which means our regular surface area would just have to be divided by two. At the same time, because it's cut in half, and it for sure looks like this is a solid piece, we'd have to then add another circle. Because that circle, now top, could technically be a base if we just flip our over the sphere, that entire thing would have to be included. So I'm gonna do some reduction. For example, that's come out as two. So two multiplied by pi, our radius in this one is five. Plug all of our information in. And our surface area, 235.62 centimeters squared. The volume, 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, dividing by 2, 
Now I just want to do a small little exercise in here because we're dividing by things and we have a fraction. So I'm going to do some nice fancy things. Whenever you divide things, you are multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing here means I'm going to be multiplying by 1 over 2, which then means I can actually reduce because even though it's all multiplication, or because it's all multiplication, I can reduce my 4 and 2 to just have a 2. So that's one way. At the same time, you could just find out your answer and divide it by 2. That's all good. This is just another way of doing it. So 2 multiplied by pi, multiplied by a radius cubed, divided by 3. So 2 pi multiplied by 5 cubed, divided by 3. And we get 261.80 centimeters cubed, which would be rounded to the two decimal places. Now that we have all that, you can go have some fun.